Love. Love, love, love. You know, uh, most people, or some people, don't understand first and foremost that God is love. That's what God is. God is love. And so that if God is love and God never changes, then love never changes, brothers. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't change. Two of you can stand up, each one of you give your definition or your idea of what love is, and I guarantee it'd be different. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Love can't be different. Love is not changing. Love is love. Yeah? Okay. Brothers, and I'm sure, without a doubt, if you looked out there in the world right now, especially in our country right, right now, you'll see that love is suffering tremendously. Yes. Okay. All right. You know, you got people uh, uh, talking about, hey, okay, I understand. We point, yes, we got an issue and we point it out. All right. What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Violence begets violence. It doesn't forget love. What love are we teaching? How are we trying to show people who we think don't have love what love is? That's what I'm asking. Okay, all right. So we see we got a whole lot of problems going on right there, man. It's not just that people don't know what love is or know how to teach love either. Yeah. First, we must know what it is. How can we teach it if we don't know what it is? Yeah, okay, yeah. Today, brothers, what we're going to learn is there are two kinds of love, but they're one. Yes, yes. Now, during our faith message, we understood that faith was believing God and obeying. Yes. Noah believed God when God told him it was going to rain, told him to build a boat. Yeah. Says he believed God and then he obeyed, didn't he? Why did not? Why was Noah saved? Was it just because God told him it was going to flood, or was it because God told him it was going to flood and build the boat? If Noah hadn't built the boat, he wouldn't have been saved, would he? I'm just saying. All right. So you see, when God tells us something, we must obey. Yes, that's called being faithful. Yes. All right. So the question is, is what are you going to be faithful to? You're going to be faithful to what God says. That's belief. Yes. How, how are you going to be faithful if you don't do what He says? Okay, brothers. Hey, look, man. I resisted what God said for a long, long time. No different than anybody else in this world. Yes. All right. All right. But how can you say you believe? If you're not going to do what he says. What are you believing? Obviously you're not believing his promises for punishment. Uh, for disobedience. You know the wrath of God is stored up for the disobedient. I'm just saying. Okay. You know uh, one of the things in, in the world today. Especially if we're talking about this. You know uh, uh, modern institution that we call the church. Yeah. Most of those folks believe in the promises from the Lord. Well, they know these things. Yeah, but what they don't believe in is the promises for disobedience. Yeah, and which is evidenced by their behavior, which is evidenced by their lack of love for Jesus Christ. Yes, even though they profess. Yes, brothers. Remember, faith was the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Nobody can see what's in your heart and minds. Only you know this. You and God. Okay, yes. However, other people can tell what you hope for. Other people can tell what you believe by your actions, can't they? Yeah. Let me ask you this. If you went around, you know, saying you got Jesus, you believe in Jesus, you go to church, so on and so forth, whatever, man. If you went around saying those things, talking like a sailor, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence of your belief? Understand what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So you understand, brothers. Yes. Furthermore, who is going to believe your witness? If you say one thing and do another. Alright. That's called hypocrisy, brothers. And it is rampant. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. 
So that what we're being faithful to is simply what God is telling us. We call that His commandments. That's what we call it. God says, don't do things. And then Jesus says, to do certain things. You see what I'm saying? Yes. All right. That's called commandments. And that's what we obey. That's what God is telling us. All right. Let's begin with this. Now, we visited this scripture, but we're going to visit it again today. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lots of people know that. And we looked at that from an aspect of faith. Yeah? Alright. Today we're going to look at this from an aspect of love. Understand what I'm saying? Yes. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Can you see how that's two different loves? God is deserving of your total devotion. All your mind. All your heart. And all your soul. Yes. That's total devotion, brothers. What have you left to love God with? What do you have left after your mind, your heart, and your soul? You don't have nothing left. That's everything. Okay. And it says to love that neighbor as thyself. So then, we don't love our neighbor like we love God. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Your neighbor doesn't get the same love that God gets. All right. All right. We don't worship ourselves, do we? Well, I mean, some people in this culture and society do. I understand. But we don't worship ourselves. We worship God. Yes. And so, because we worship God and not ourselves, we're not going to worship people around us. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Alright. What was Adam's sin, brothers? What was Adam's true sin? He hearkened to the voice of his wife to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what he did. God told him not to do it. She said do it. And he did it. Now, my question is, which one did he love? Yes. Okay. He loved his wife more than he loved God. Just evidenced by the fact that he hearkened to her voice and not God's. Yes, brother. And this is the difference between loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul and loving thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. Let's look here at something Jesus tells us. Matthew 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You know, I didn't really understand that scripture for a long time. But that's because I was in rebellion. I wasn't trying to submit to God. Yes, yes. But as Jesus is telling us plain and simple. We obey God first. Then those around us. You see what I'm saying? If God is telling us not to do something... And these people around us want to do this thing that God is telling us not to do. Which one are you going to hearken to? Which one are you going to love? Yes. Alright, brothers. Hey, look. There's lots of people around you. Lots of people that's going to want you to do things that God is telling you not to do. That Jesus Christ is asking you to do. It's going to happen. I'll tell you one of the things, one of the things that's real simple that's going to happen is somebody's going to want to sleep with you. Yeah, 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 all right. They're going to want to hook up. What does God say? All right, do you see what I'm saying? Now, which one are you going to do? You're professing Jesus Christ. You're professing the desire to do what God is saying, to think like God, to feel like God. All right, these people see that and they hear that about you, yeah. But then they see you do something he says not to do. Okay, all right, brothers. Now listen, listen. 
I'm telling you these things because it's true. But I also happen to know the difficulty in it also. Yeah, it's not going to happen overnight, man. Okay? It's not going to happen overnight. The desire is born overnight. Yes. But it's not going to happen overnight. The fruit's not going to happen. You know, love is something that's got to grow. Yes. All right. All right. Let's look at something else here. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand out, desiring to speak with you. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. All right. Now, the command was love God with all your heart, mind, and spirit, and love that neighbor as thyself. And he's telling us that we don't have love for those around us differently than those others around us. You see what I'm saying? He didn't love his mom more. He didn't love his brother more than those people who were around him. In fact, he said those people who were around him that was doing the will of God was the same as his mom and as his brothers. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Brothers, look. In all of our relationships, we got peoples that we love differently. Don't we? We got some that we love a little more than others. There are some that we would do some things for, but not other things. Yes, it's called classification, isn't it? This is what we do. All right. That's not loving that neighbor as thyself, brothers. We love everyone the same. And you say, no, I can't do that, man. I can't treat, I can't treat this guy like I would my mom. All right. What you don't understand just yet is that there are roles and responsibilities for us. And the roles that God gives to us. Yes? Yes. I'll res I'll, let, let, me, let me prove this to you. How many of you are husbands? Nobody? Alright. A couple? Okay. Alright. You're a husband. Why are you a husband? Because God made you to be a husband. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was God who made you into a husband. Because it was God who gave you the good gift of a wife. You see what I mean? Yes. Okay. So it was God who gave you a wife. That made you a husband. Guess what? God has got a role written out for you as a husband. Which outlines your husband you. Yeah. How about that? Guess what? God has got an outline for every role that He has made you to be. Whether you're a son, whether you're a daughter, whether you're a brother, or whether you're a sister, whether you're a husband, whether you're a disciple, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a teacher, whether you're an apostle, whatever it is that He's called you to be, whatever it is that He has made you to be, there's a role for you. Full of responsibilities. Right here. Yeah, and so that to fulfill these roles and these responsibilities is love for God. So that while there may be things that you would do for someone around you that you might not do for others, that is not a product of love for them. That is a product of love for God. Take for example, I'm a husband. This is my wife. There are some things I'm commanded to do. You understand what I'm saying? And she is who I shall do that for. Because I am commanded. But I don't have to do that same thing for everyone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I'm a husband. It's my duty to provide. It's my duty to protect. It's my duty to sanctify. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's my duty to heal. It's my duty to do these things. Yes. I'm not going to do that with everybody else. All right. You see what I'm saying here? All right, brothers. Love for God. Love for God. God will lead you in everything that you do when you love Him with all your heart, mind, and spirit and you submit to Him. 
Yes. Yes. We're going to get to loving your neighbors, brothers. Trust me. But I want to focus more on this on God. You know, uh, everybody that you talk to knows that all you got to do is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. How many of you already knew that? Come on, on a show of hands. How many of you already knew that? Yes. Everybody knows that. But the problem is, is that they don't know how to do that. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, <laughs> everybody thinks that that's Jesus' commandment. You know, it was Jesus who said that, right? Yeah. That's what Jesus, that's the new covenant, right? Yeah. That's what they say. All right. Well, listen. I want you to listen. Deuteronomy. Make sure I got it. Yeah. Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 5. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and judgment which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, and the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Which commandment is it? Alright, it's not Jesus' commandment, folks. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason I point this out to you is because there are lots of people out there, man, that will tell you, you don't got to do what God says anymore. All you got to do is love God and love your neighbor and that's it. Yes. My brothers, what I'm here to tell you today is that every single commandment that God has given to us tells us how to love our neighbors. How to love Him. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Love is more than a feeling. Love is more than a feeling. Take for example. Thou shalt not make unto thyselves any graven images of wood or stone or molten metal and bow thyself down to worship them. You think that's a commandment that's teaching us how to love God? I'm just saying. Yeah. Alright brothers. And I can do that with every single one of his commandments. Whether it's, thou shalt not bear false witness unto thy neighbor. Yeah, don't lie to your neighbor. What are you doing when you lie to your neighbor? Besides displeasing God, what are you doing when you lie to your neighbor? You're robbing him. You're stealing from him. You're stealing the truth from him. Yes. Alright, brothers, I'm just saying. There's a reason, brothers. There's a reason. Alright. 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 Jesus is telling us that we got to love everyone the same. Everyone around us the same. Give them the same love. Although, because you love God most, there may be things that God is telling you that you got to do for an individual. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're dads, yeah, all right. If you're a brother, if you're a son, you got to honor that father and that mother, don't you? There are things that you've got to do for specific relationships when you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Brothers, that's so very important. You know, one of the problems in the world today is that people have no natural affection anymore. Natural affection is that love that you have for your family. You, God has made you to be what it is that you are. Do you understand? And because He commands us how to have this relationship with these people around us. Everybody's love is growing cold because they no longer love God to do what God says. To believe that they must do what God says. Yes. Oh, it, it's the new millennium. Yeah. We don't got to do that no more. I'm just saying, I've heard it all, man. I've heard it all. I've heard so many people tell me why they don't have to do one thing or the other that God says. That's called rebellion. That's called rebellion, brothers. And what I gotta ask you is, do you think God's gonna give you a free pass for rebellion? I'm just 
and saying, hey, Jesus Christ is that free pass for us, brothers. He is that free pass for us. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right. When you get that free pass, you start doing what he says. Okay? Yeah. Because once you take that free pass and you get up there and you have to do what he says, what do you think is going to happen? All right. All right. Listen. Exodus 20, verse 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to approve you, and that his fear may be before ye faces, that ye sin not. What do you think God came to prove about us? Especially with sin. There's a reason why God gave the children of Israel the commandments. You understand what I'm saying? First and foremost, it was so that we would know what was sinful. So that we would know what sin was. And knowing that God is displeased with sin, yeah, we must know what is sinful. That'd be pretty, that, that, that'd be pretty awful, wouldn't it? To be angry and upset with you for doing something that you didn't even know? Okay, alright. That's the first reason He gave us the law, the commandments. Yes? But the second reason that He gave us the commandments was to prove something. Yes. What is it that He's trying to prove? Whether you will love Him or not. Brother's love is more than a feeling that you have in your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? It begins there. Most certainly. Most certainly, brothers. Hey, don't get lost confused with love. Yes, but it does begin there. Yeah, but that's not where it ends. You understand? Yes, all right. All right. All right. God gave us the commandments to prove whether or not we would love Him. So that when you hear people tell you that Jesus Christ came to free us from the law, that we don't got to do what God says no more, hopefully you now know better. Yes. What proof is there of their love? What proof is there of their love for God knowing that this is the greatest commandment? Okay, brothers. Alright. Hey, start with one. Pick one. Pick one. And tell yourself, I'm not going to do this anymore. And don't. For me, I started with lying. Yeah. Because when, when, by, by putting lies away from me, I knocked out two birds with one stone. Yeah. Because I also quit stealing. See what I'm saying? Because that's not honest, is it? Yeah. I also quit doing things that I was ashamed of. That I was ashamed that other people know. Pick one, brothers. And put all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul into keeping it. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So we know that loving God... As doing what God says. And we love Him with all of our mind. All of our heart. And all of our soul. We will do what He says. Okay. Now. We have Jesus Christ. Who is the Son of God. Yes. Jesus said. I and the Father are one. Okay. So. What about what Jesus says? Because if you read it. If you, read your, if you read your Bible, you'll see that there are a few things that are just a bit different from the gospel and the law. Yes? Yes. And there's a reason. Jesus came to teach us something. Jesus came to teach us and to show us how to love our neighbors and how to love God. You know, the, the Hebrew people, they had some Mighty fine examples of religious folks. They called them the priests. They called themselves Pharisees. I'm just saying. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of religion, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there was a problem. They weren't setting a very good example. Oh, they said they kept the law. They said they obeyed God. Yeah. But in their hearts, they did not. And it was evidenced by their actions. Yes. Remember we can tell what a man hopes for, what a man believes by his actions. Yes. Okay. All right. 
And Jesus told us that if our righteousness did not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, we weren't going to make it. Okay, so he had to come to show us these things. Yes. He had to come to show us how to love God. He had to come to show us how to love our neighbor. All right, brothers. All right. Let's listen. This is uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judith asked him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Now we learned a couple weeks ago that First John, yeah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, that if we loved God, we would also love Jesus Christ. Yes. And that loving God was loving our neighbors. But more than that, loving God was also keeping His commandments. Yes. Yes. First John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Alright. Now Jesus is telling us, Jesus is telling us that to love Him... We must do what he says. What do you think about that? I'm just saying. Yeah. Doing what he says. Loving him is no different than loving God, brothers. If we love them, we're going to do what they say. Alright. Alright. How about this? How about a man says he loves them, but doesn't do what they say? It's called a liar, brothers. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Now listen. There's going to be a difference, brothers. There's going to be a difference in you confessing Jesus Christ and having a weakness. Do you understand what I'm saying? A weakness of the flesh. That's something totally different. A lie is not of your flesh. A lie is of your spirit. A lie is of your mind. A lie is of your heart. It's not a weakness of your body. It's not like some sexual immorality. It's not like drugs and alcohol. No, it's not like that, brothers. It's from your heart. Jesus said it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, but what comes out. Because what comes out proceeds from the heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So then, if you're telling lies, what's that say about your heart? Where's the desire? Where's the desire for the truth? Brothers, that is within your control. Without a doubt. Telling lies is within your control. Yes. You can't quit. You can't put them away from you. Let me just go ahead and say that now. Brothers. Let me just go ahead and say that now. Start with that. I said pick a commandment start with it. But let's start with lies. Because I'll be honest with you, man. Honesty is always the best policy and it is the beginning of everything. Yes, yes. Start with that. I will not tell any more lies. And I will have a love for the truth. Yes. Guard yourselves, brothers, with love for the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth, isn't he? Then he call himself the truth. Alright, alright. He calls himself the truth and he's telling us that we gotta love it. Okay, brothers. Yeah, I don't care how you spin it, man. Yeah, alright. Start with that, brothers. Start with that. We'll not tell you more lies. Now I want you to notice something here. Jesus said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And my Father and I will come and make our abode with him. I want you to think about something. You know, uh, one of the things that you know everybody knows is that God loves everybody, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. God loves everybody. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on Him should not perish.
prayers could have everlasting life. Okay. Yeah. So what is Jesus telling us? God loves those people who keep my commandments. Seems a bit confusing, doesn't it? Yeah? Alright. It's like this, brothers. Yeah? It's like this. God does love the world. Yeah. He loved it so much that He gave His Son to die. So that anyone and everyone in it would have the opportunity to be saved. That is the love that God had for the world. Yeah. But the love that God has for individuals is for those who do what Christ says. For those who love Jesus Christ and does what He says. That's where favor comes from, brothers. You ever heard that before? Man is highly favored. Yeah, alright. That's where favor comes from. Okay, brothers. You must do what Jesus says. Start with the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They call it the words of red. Just saying. Yeah. Start applying the things that Jesus is telling you. Start doing the things that Jesus Christ is telling you to do. And stop doing the things that God is telling you not to do. That's everything right there. It took me a long time to figure that out, man. And even longer to accept it. And even longer still to apply it. Yes, I'm just saying, guys. Yeah, alright. It was hard for me to love God. I'm sure it's probably hard for you too. How do you love somebody that you can't see? How do you love somebody that you can't reach out to give a hug to or to receive a hug from? How do you do that? Yeah. It begins with you recognizing the love that He has for you. That's right. Brothers, listen. That's, we're going over that next week, matter of fact. The love that God has for us. Because I'm telling you here today, here and now, you are not going to be able to love God until you see and feel the love that He has for you. And some of you may have already felt it. I don't know. Yeah, but I can see the look on some of you guys' faces, man. Yeah, alright. This is what i got to ask you. How are you going to return something if you don't know what it is? Alright. It's going to have to be made evident to you, brothers. Yes, yes. Because what you've been telling yourself love is all this time has not been love. You understand what I'm saying? So that in truth, in fact, you don't know what love is because you don't know if you felt it or not. Because you haven't known what it is. Alright, I'm just saying I'm keeping it real, man. Now some of you may have felt love. I don't know. Yeah, but I do know that this was a huge problem with me in my walk. It was also a huge problem with me in my addiction. There was something that I was seeking in my life that I had never felt before. Didn't know what it was I was seeking, just knew that I was seeking something. I mean, y'all seen little babies put stuff in their mouth. Everything in their hand goes to their mouths. It's because there's something that they want. There's something that they need. But they don't know what it is. Until they put it in their mouth. Alright. Brothers, there's something that I wanted. Something that I needed. And I didn't know what it was. And this was the reason I was sticking drugs in my arm. Just saying. Alright. Until I felt it the first time. Until I recognized it. Until I was able to receive it and recognize it. Brothers, and that was simply joy. I don't know about the rest of you, but I use substances to make my body feel the way I wanted to feel. You understand what I'm saying? My spirit is. It was a product of the way I was raised. No love, no joy. It is what it is. Yeah, all right, all right. So we're going to go over the love that God has for us because you're going to need to feel this, brothers. Absolutely going to need to feel this in order to return it to God. Yes, yes. Alright, alright. So, we know we gotta love God. We know we gotta love Christ. We know we gotta do what God says. And we gotta do what Christ says. Furthermore, furthermore, we do what they say over anybody else. Yes, yes, over anybody else. Brothers, look, hey, sometimes that's hard. I, 
I know sometimes that's hard. There are things that you want. There are relationships that you're trying to build. There is all kind of things that you want and need to do or think you want and need to do concerning other people. I mean, part of the program is preparing your relationships, isn't it? Yeah. Forgive me, brothers. I don't know the steps. I, I, didn't, I, didn't have, I, didn't, I didn't go through a program. Jesus Christ was enough for me. Yeah. All right. And guess what? He's enough for you, too. Yeah. But it's good that you got other people around you trying to do the similar thing that you're doing in this moment. Yeah, that's called brotherhood. All right. It's necessary. It's necessary. Okay. So we know that we do what they say over anybody else. Always. 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 He said, all your mind, all your heart, and all your spirit. Now, what i got to ask you is, when are you going to devote more of one of these things to someone other than God? Okay, brothers. All right. Evidence. And we love our neighbors as ourselves. Brothers, we're going to go over loving our neighbors. We're going to go over how to do it. There's a, specific, there's a lot of specifics about love. And for those of you men that want to get ahead... 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read that chapter. Read the whole chapter. Yeah. That's what love is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yes. Get an idea. Um, listen. For those of you that go ahead and check that out. As you read that. Read it over and over. Don't just read it one time. Read it over and over. As you read through that. Ask yourself. Is this my idea of love? Is this what you have done in your relationships, in your life? Brothers, uh, if you have a love for the truth, I'm pretty sure that you understand that it has not been love that you've been sharing with all those people around you. Yes. All right. Hey, brothers, I'll be honest with you. That was one of the hardest things for me to accept. To understand what I'm saying. I got married, and I thought, I, 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 I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. I know what love is. Love's unconditional, right? Ain't it unconditional? Ain't we supposed to love people no matter what? Yeah. All right. Brothers, love has conditions. Yeah. And you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yeah. You can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Listen. Last, last week we learned that one of the steps of faith was calling on the name of the Lord to be saved. Right? The first step of faith was believing on the Lord to be saved. The second step of faith was calling on the name of the Lord to be saved. The third step of faith was confessing Jesus Christ to other people so that Christ would confess us to God. The fourth step of faith was loving Jesus Christ. And the last step of faith was enduring in this faith unto our end. Yes, that was the steps of faith. All right, all right. Now what i got to ask you, brothers, what if you call on Jesus Christ to be saved, but have no love for Him? You're just doing it because I told you you had to do it. Or somebody else told you you had to do it. Or how about this? How about you're only keeping God's commandments to be saved, not because you love Him? Do you see what I'm saying here? And there's a lot of people out there that don't tell lies, kids. They know it's wrong. They don't tell lies. There's a lot of people out there that don't commit certain immoralities. I'm just saying, a lot of these commandments that are given to us to govern us, there are a lot of people that don't do these things. But they no love for God. What's Jesus going to say to those people in that day? Matthew 7, 21-23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Alright. 
you know how Christ is able to say that? Because Christ is real, brothers. You can't hide nothing from Him. You can't hide nothing from the Holy Spirit. You might be able to fake the funk with some people around you, but you ain't going to be able to fake it with Him. These people were doing the things that He says to do. They were working miracles. They were casting out devils. They were doing many wonderful works. These things that Christ has sent His disciples out to do. And yet, He said, Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, which is sin. Which was sin. Even though they were doing the right things, the right way, He still called them a sinner, didn't He? Why? Because they had no love for Him. Brothers, it's so very important. Hey, you can, you can conform to God's commandments, man. You can. You can stop telling lies. You can stop sleeping around. You can not bow down to graven images, man. There, there's all kinds of things that God is telling us not to do that you can stop doing under your own power. Yes. But unless you love God, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter, brothers. Don't walk away from here today thinking the preacher man told you that all you got to do is keep God's commandments and you're going to go to heaven. Because that's not the case. Now you're going to have to love God with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul. It just so happens that a person who loves God with all these things are going to do everything that God says to do. He's going to do everything that Jesus Christ says to do. Because you love them. Now, my question is, is why are you going to love them? Because they first loved you. That's why. Brothers, look, listen. Which is easier? To give to someone that you don't know, that's never gave you anything, or is it easier to give to someone that you know that has already gave to you? When you're up here, somebody comes to ask you for a cigarette. They gave you a cigarette a couple days ago. You're going to throw them one, ain't you? Yeah, you're going to throw them one. Not even thinking twice about it. But you let a new guy come in. Don't got no cigarettes. Ask you for one. Nah, man, I ain't got one. I only got a couple left. All right. It's easier to show love to those people who have already shown and shared love with you. Yes, yes. And so that, and so that, we see Jesus Christ having loved us first. Died for us. 2,000 years ago. Hung on the cross, brothers. Yeah. We see that God having loved us first by sending His Son into the world to die. And those are the two quickest, easiest explanations of His love for us that everybody should know. But there's so much more, brothers. There's so much more. Everybody's sitting here clothed. Nobody's naked. Ain't nobody sitting here that's dead. Everybody's eating all their lives, obviously, or you wouldn't be here. God has done a lot to provide for us, brothers. Besides food and clothing. Yeah. But those should two be two very obvious examples of God's love for us. There's all kinds of things that God has done for us. There's all kinds of things God has given to us. Like, for example, the ability to feel love by sharing love with us. I don't know about you all, but I count that pretty good. To be able to experience that with my heart and with my soul. I count that to be pretty good. Yeah? All right. Brothers, you might start pondering this love that God has for you. You might start looking back in your life and start looking for times in your life when it should have been or could have been a whole lot worse than what it was. I bet there's a lot of you that are sitting here right now that should not be sitting here. That should in fact be dead. God's got a plan for you, brothers. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's got a plan for you. He does love you. It's time to start returning that love to Him. Yes. Alright. Alright. That's all i got to say today, brothers. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Check that out. Get up on that. Yeah? Find out how to love people. It's not going to be easy, brothers. Hey, look, listen. 
loving God is going to be a whole lot easier than loving that person in front of you. It just is. Yeah. Especially when you see how God has loved you. Yeah. Okay. But that person in front of you, man, might not be so easy to love. They might have been some terrible, wicked person. They might have done bad things to you. Said bad things about you. Refused you in some manner or other. It, it's be very hard. Yes. All right. All right. And then, we come to understand what love is. At least we know how to practice it. Yeah. We know where we got to start. Okay, girls. Start reading it. Well, is any of y'all that's ready, man, to accept this love that God has for you, has given to you all your life, has been with you all your days? Hit me up. Time to get that water in before it gets cold. Yeah, I'm just saying. Don't put it off, bros. You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. You can get kicked out tomorrow and end up back at the trap house the next day. It could happen. And you know this. You need to continue holding on to God and calling on God, bros. Yes, do all things. All things. Don't let it slip. Don't let the opportunity pass you by. Haven't you been doing that already? Where did that get you? Alright, alright. Brothers, I just want you to know that I do love you. You know, I love God, but I also love you. Yeah, yeah. I do this. And I'm not the only one. Everybody that you see that comes down. Everybody that you see that helps up here. You know, we love God, and it is God who commands us to go out, without a doubt, man. Yeah, but we also love you. We love you, and we care about your salvation. We care about your peace. We care about your knowledge. We care about your wisdom. We care about your strength, your comfort, your temperance, your meekness. Brothers, there are so many things about you that we care about, and that's why we come to share this with you. Yes. Each one of us has our own job, if you haven't noticed. Yeah? Alright, alright. But we all care about the same things in you, brothers. And by this example, by this example, you go forth with the same love. Yes. For the same reasons. Just the same way, brothers. Yeah? Alright. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we give thanks today for your word, Lord. For this great word that you have preserved for us through the ages, Lord. That we may have it. That we may be able to read it. That we may be led by it, Father. That you would guide us from it, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for not changing each day that goes by, Father. Thank you for not requiring different things of us through different times, Father. Thank you for remaining the same. Thank you for being stable, Father. And thank you for allowing us to love you in this manner, Lord. Father, I pray that you strengthen us. That you strengthen love within us, Father. That we just not only feel it, Father, but have the power to share it, Lord. Pour it out upon us, Father. Lord, we lift this meeting up to you, Lord, that it be glorified to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.